welcome to Coxie's Picks. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to Coxie's Picks and today we're looking at the push button Revolia. Um, I probably butchered that. I'm not very good at saying the words that I don't understand. So we've got the model 2020 which I've already showcased uh, and you can see that visually we have straight away a difference in the color of the push buttons. Also the 2020 has a ball bearing to withhold on the double lock and make picking even harder. So they keep coming up with all these design variations. Uh, why do they do that? Well, mainly it's to stop people escaping out of them. And these particular cuffs, they found that there was a few issues with them and so they wanted to address it. One of the issues that they had is involving the mechanism itself. It's quite unique. Uh, it slides down and underneath uh, the actual cuff body. Now if I just quickly put the key in and then pull it down, you can see it instead of it just going straight down, it goes down and slides away from the mechanism. So you can see that motion there. And that is partly because they tried to incorporate a new fun anti-shim. You can see in the body that we've got shim steps, which we've seen have been quite successful to, to actually stop a shim in. But what this would do now is it creates a ridge underneath so that you would trap your shim underneath the actual cuff itself. Now you can get past that particular step by using a bit of bow manipulation and depressing the tooth just a fraction and then it makes that gap minuscule and so that your shim can then jump up through. So let's see if we can quickly demonstrate that. Uh, stand by. So hang on. In. In. And we're under and we're shimmed. So the anti-shim protection needed to be updated, so that was the first thing they did. And they also wanted to put a ball bearing inside to stop the double lock being eased off. Now, these are notoriously tough to get, so we use the well-known cheap jackknife from Amazon. Now, and what we're going to have to do is go at the bottom of the keyway, and you're going to try and find the sweet spot and lever off with the teardrop, and hopefully you'll get the, the double lock removed. So we just need to painstakingly navigate around inside the lock, blindly fumbling. So here we go. Nope, nope, nope. And unfortunately the spring is super duper tight. So oh, maybe, maybe I've got the body ping to move a little. So I'm just going to apply a little tension on the bow to try and help me. And there we go, we've got it. So that's the double lock done. Now as you can see it took a lot of manipulation going in at various points to get the actual um, double lock removed. And you can also notice that we had to depress the bow a fraction just to help ease it off. Now as with the 2020 model, um, it's incredibly difficult to just pick these because of the tension that's involved. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and use the bow to manipulate, push the paws into a more visible place for our tool to reach hook them, push it a fr fraction more, and then keep the tension on, and then we should be able to whip them undone. So, in we go with our tool, we're going to go parallel with the top of the keyway. Uh, so in we go, and we're going to apply a light lean back. We're going to depress the bow a fraction, and hopefully I've caught it. Didn't feel like I did. Or well, maybe... No, missed it. So we'll just reset and try again. And the problem with this is Oh, there we go. I've now locked it out. So there we go. I'm in the right place. And there we go. So you can see I've got the cuff undone. As soon as I move the tool, though, the tension comes back on. So what we need to do is we need to see how hard it is to get out of this particular set of cuffs. All right. So I suggest we go over to the point of view camera and see how difficult it is. Bearing in mind that these chain links are incredibly small and it will make moving my hands around a little bit more tricky. So let's go over to the point of view camera and see how easy it is. Okie dokie, so we've got the 2004s on with the double lock sat and all we're going to do is we're going to line it up on our wrist, we're going to squeeze the bow and then on the back of the chair hopefully there's a nice solid bit there. There we go, that's that one done and then we'll do exactly the same. And that's that one done. And as you can see, the double locks are still set. So we'll just go into the reset. And that's the cuff set. Cuff 
reset and back to normal. Hoofing. Welcome back. Yes, I bamboozled you, I know. Um, and that is because that's why these cuffs were taken out of service. The floor is valid on the 2003 model and it seems they didn't quite fix it on the 2004 model. So what I'll do is I'll quickly demonstrate here what I was actually doing. So you've got the double lock, you depress it, voila. Right, and on the 2003, you never had to do any bow manipulation, but on the 2004, you do. So all you would do is you push the teeth in and you can feel some massive tension come through and the double lock starts to bite. And what we're gonna do is we'll just get a little knockometer. All right, so I'll just get this, I'll put my thumb out of the way, safety first. And what we're gonna do is just tap it. There we go. All right, and you can see what we've done is we forced the teeth over the top of the double lock. The double lock is now retaining them and the teeth are now clear and free, which allows the bow to swing free. It's very rare to find a set of handcuffs that don't require a tool to escape. And you'll be surprised to know, or not surprised to know, that these were removed from service very quickly as soon as they realized that they hadn't fixed the exploit. And the worst bit is, is that if you were to escape, you could just reset the double lock and it was if you were never in them in the first place. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.